It's no secret that without a trailer, it wouldn't be possible for many of us to get to and from the boat ramp. Owning and maintaining a high quality trailer will ensure your boat stays safe and in tip top shape. A high quality trailer built to high tolerances with the best components will be easier to tow, save you thousands in fuel costs over the life of ownership and provide you with years of safe operation. Welcome back to Behind the Glass. This week, we're on the road once again. This time, we're in a little city right outside Orlando, Florida called Harmony. And we're gonna be touring the 100,000 square foot manufacturing facility for Ameritrail and showing you exactly how boat trailers are made. Ameritrail has been building trailers for nearly 40 years. Over that time frame, founder and president Scott Locke has been pressing his goal of building what he believes is a trailer superior to all others on the market. Our mission from day one has been to deliver great memories around the water from the start of the day to the end of the day. At Sportsman, we are nearly 100% vertically integrated. And what that's done is it allowed us to ensure the highest quality across the board from the design of the hull to the beautiful upholstery that fills the boat. I started Ameritrail in 1986 after working with my dad from 80 to 83 in a trailer company called Baron Trailers. I was already a boater and saw many people struggling at the ramp after a great day on the water. I knew there was a better way to build an easy loading trailer. Automation has been a great factor for Ameritrail. The first piece of equipment I bought, I couldn't afford it, but we brought it in anyway, and it proved the fact that yes, you can afford automated equipment. It is now taking us to really deep depths of automation. I'm gonna to continue to push it as far as I can. I believe this has increased productivity among our staff as they get to work with machines rather than repeating the same small processes over and over on a daily basis. The use of machines eliminates the human error and the need for rework, allowing for a faster production time for our customers. Ameritrail knows that it'll never be the largest trailer manufacturer. We're not cookie cutter. We're more custom in a production level we're always going to build a higher end trailer. We want the experience for the customer to be good. Ameritrail is a big part of the boating experience. I always say a great day on the water should end with an easy loading trailer and a safe trip home. That reminds me of our slogan, load, launch, relax. A trailer is an often overlooked, but a complex piece of engineering. It must fit the boat perfectly so it's easy to launch and retrieve. 
Many states have high requirements for lights and brakes, and it needs to be perfectly balanced. A trailer that isn't properly built is unsafe at high speed and could damage your boat over time. But how are these workhorses designed and built? Well, that brings us to today. As you can imagine, such automated process takes a hardworking team of engineers who not only can program and build these machines, but also transform a boat model into a perfect trailer for the customer. Ameritrail works closely with each OEM builder to build a trailer specific to each boat model. For example, this past year we released our brand new Open 252, Open 232, and Heritage 231. Each of these boats was designed by our in-house engineering team with the use of CAD software. Once complete, those CAD designs are sent to Ameritrail where they'll take a specific boat haul design and build a trailer specifically for it. If you order an Ameritrail trailer for your Open 232, it's the only boat that will fit perfectly on that trailer. This allows for a good boat ramp experience, better towing feel, and a great fit. What this does is it increases the ease of use and safety. It's this precision that requires such a highly skilled team of engineers and makes these trailers one of the most highly recognized boat trailers on the road today. To begin building a trailer, you must first prep all the raw materials for assembly. There are a few main pieces to the trailer build. I-beam, cross members, bunks, and axles. Ameritrail first started their automation journey through the I-beam construction process. To get precise drilling on each I-beam, Ameritrail started working with the manufacturer to adopt a custom machine used in other industries to convert it for trailer automation. Since that day, this machine has been adopted by much of the trailer manufacturing world. Raw aluminum beams are run through the pre-programmed machine to drill out specific holes needed for the construction process. This precision eliminates the opportunity for human error and any rework that can be caused due to mismeasurements. Additionally, this speeds up the drilling on the I-beams. On average, the I-beam has 60 to 100 different holes, and it can do two beams at a time. The programming of this machine is one of the top operations and designs the engineering team here at Meritrail has. By using the CAD of each hull, they're able to model every trailer to exact spec before the build ever takes place. In turn, labor can be utilized elsewhere to further speed the trailer building process, which creates happier customers and better business. Modern technology and machines have allowed the engineers to more easily build a perfect trailer from the beginning without needing to rework or refit pieces to dial everything in. Innovations like the I-Beam drilling machine have helped grow and shape the trailer industry. It's aided in the creation of a better product, which is the key to further growing the marine industry. Once each I-Beam has been fully drilled, it will next be moved into the bending process. Ameritrail uses a handmade hydraulic bender, which will bend each beam to spec for further assembly. Before we get into assembling the trailer, we first must go into fabricating the next pieces used, the cross members, which is where we'll go back for some more raw aluminum. Cross members are the most important pieces of the trailer. These pieces that run horizontally across the body of the trailer connecting the two I-beams, holding each bunk in place and supporting the boat's weight on the trailer. The cross members are where the trailer gains its status as custom. 
Each one is formed using an automated robot that's programmed using CAD designs of each hull and trailer built. The robot is programmed to place each bunk plate in the exact spot at an exact angle. Once there, the operator is then able to tack weld everything before it moves into production welding. Every boat's crossmember will vary slightly as each boat is designed differently. This means different angle bends, different placements of bunk brackets, and different lengths to meet the bend of the I-B. Using a proprietary jigging robot, they fabricate a template that will be used for every subsequent trailer in the production line. Using the templates, we can now see how an actual crossmember is being precisely welded in this robotic welder. Once all crossmembers are fabricated, it's time to move into the assembly process. The assembly process starts with what is referred to as bottoms. Like it sounds, this is where the bottom portion of the trailer is assembled. The trailers are started in an upside down position and the cross members that we previously saw built are now ready to be installed. Each cross member is either bolted or welded depending on the style and design. Next, the axles will be bolted onto the trailer frame. Due to the use of two different metals, Ameritrail uses a special 3M tape, which will provide a barrier between the dissimilar metals. What this does is it prevents corrosion caused by dissimilar metals touching. Each metal has different electro potentials. The electro potential tells us how easily metal gives up an electron. When there's any sort of underwater electrical current, you can have electrolysis introduced if two dissimilar metals are brought together in that environment. The barrier tape prevents these two metals from touching and helps avoid any electrolysis and in turn prevents premature failure. Once all cross members and axles are bolted onto the frame, the tongue is inserted. It will be flipped using a crane, then moved on to the next face, where other key items are welded into the frame. There are two ways of assembling trailer components. We've seen the first, which is bolting items onto the trailer. Now, let's take a look at how the rest of the trailer components are welded. Welding components yields a higher quality and longer lasting trailer. Starting at the front of the trailer, line welders will weld the jack plate and spare tire plates to the front tongue portion of the trailer. Later in the process, a jack will be installed with which will be used to race and lower the trailer on and off the tow vehicle. One unique construction choice Ameritrail makes is welding under tie down brackets to the most aft portion of the trailer. Since trailers are designed with I-beams running the full boat length for a better trailer experience, it's the perfect place to place tie downs. This placement means straps are not rubbing on the boat's gel coat and causing any sort of rash while maintaining a very strong connection to the boat. The last item we will see welded onto the trailer are the tail light brackets, which are made of a heavy aluminum and welded to the frame of the trailer. This not only supports the taillights, but also acts as a secondary step. 
The next process the trailer will enter is mainline assembly. This is where the trailer will have fenders bolted on, decals and reflective tape applied, keel pads installed on cross members, and finally it will receive its bunks. One thing you'll notice is that the steps and fenders are bolted on rather than being welded on. By choice, these components are bolted on to make them easier to replace in the future if ever needed. This saves time and makes install and replacement much easier during manufacturing. The keel pads are the next thing to be installed. These rubber pads provide protection for the keel. The keel of the boat is the lowest point of the boat and the first point of contact as the boat is loaded onto the trailer. Without keel pads, you damage the bottom of your hull on the metal crossmember of the trailer. At this stage, a custom wiring harness and brake lines are routed through a cable clamps using aluminum rivets throughout the trailer. Ameritrail Pioneer grounding all lights to the tow vehicle by running a ground wire throughout the trailer. This creates a more reliable electrical system. The final step here is completing the trailer brakes. Using flexible brake lines fitted with brass connections, the lines are routed through the frame. The brake lines are protected by a plastic sleeve as well as grommets. That prevents the line from chafing. All brake systems are pressure bled to remove any air in the system. Let's take a quick break in the assembly process and talk about one of the unique features for Ameritrail trailers. What you'll notice here are support bunks as well as target bunks. We'll get back to the target bunks in just a second, but let's talk about where these bunks end. They end all the way aft of the boat, right at the transom where all of the weight is. This helps support all of the engine weight and anything else that is at the transom. Specifically talking about these target bunks, let's imagine a situation where you're coming onto the trailer and it didn't quite nail it. Maybe there's a cross current and the boat is not straight on the trailer. These target bunks are gonna hit the boat right at the very beginning and they're gonna help you straighten out the boat and then all you have to do is drive the boat back on the trailer. Stepping back into the assembly process, we will now look at the installation of the bunks we were just discussing. Before bunks are installed, they are first fitted onto the trailer to make sure everything aligns perfectly and that there's no adjustments needed. Once the technicians have the green light, they will install the bunks onto the trailer. Depending on the size of the boat and complexity of the hull, the bunks will be installed with either through bolts or lags. Next, you'll see all reflective tape and decals are placed on the trailer. It's something you may not think much about, but the reflective tape is designed for safety while trailering and it is required by the DOT. We've seen how the bunks are installed, but we've yet to see how they are made. And for that, we will head over to our first sub-assembly the woodworking area of the facility to see carpenters at work. Each trailer has different size bunks needed, so several different sizes of lumber is used. You'll see everything from 2x4s and 2x6s to 4x8s. All of this is dependent on the size of the boat, trailer, and weight. The standard wood used within all bunks at Ameritrail is ground contact pressure treated pine. This ensures a high life expectancy with zero rotting even after years of saturated carpet resting on it. The carpenters are given the precise measurements based on the CAD designs for each bunk and those bunks will be specific to each trailer. Once all raw wood materials are cut, they'll have holes drilled for through bolting unless they're lag bolted. Once all the drilling is complete, they'll move on to the carpeting area to receive the black carpet we all recognize from boat trailers. 
The use of carpet is for hull protection, so your boat does not sit against raw wood. And it also helps the boat more easily slide on and off the bunks when launching or retrieving the boat. The next sub-assembly area we will look at is where the winch stands and V-blocks are assembled. The V-block is an important component to stabilize the boat while in tow and for boats equipped with a windless system. Some trailers will have a roller and this is often seen on smaller boats without the windless system. V-blocks are often attached to winch stands. The winch is what is used to secure the boat to the trailer. Each trailer configuration has been matched to the hull and any windless options. Once everything is fully assembled, the trailers are ready for shipment. Large trailers will head down the road solo and smaller trailers will be stacked, secured, and sent to the destination. We often overlook how important it is for us to own a high quality trailer and what it does to our boating experience. It's amazing to see what the Ameritrail team has done from a quality, innovation, and design perspective on these trailers. We'd love to give a huge shout out to the Ameritrail team for opening their doors for us today. And we'd love to see you in the next installment of Behind the Glass. Don't forget to subscribe for the latest content from Sportsman Boats. Thank you for watching.